Welcome to our first UAPCS On Demand tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how to prepare a board packet. You might be wondering why do you need a board packet? Um, if you can't wait to spend all of your time uh, in the company of your fellow board members, then you don't need to listen to the rest of this uh, tutorial. But for everyone else, uh, it's important that board members, when they come to a meeting, be prepared and the agenda, or the, excuse me, the packet is going to help them be able to do that. They're going to be able to read uh, information that they will be talking about later. They're going to be able to formulate good questions, uh, have meaningful discussion, and most importantly, keep your meetings uh, efficient and on task. What's in a board packet? Uh, there's going to be your agenda, your finance report, your director's report, your committee reports, your PTO report, uh, action item documentation, and training material. Not all of these are required, but we're going to talk about each piece independently. Uh, first up is the agenda. That is, a, is legally required, and it must be posted in accordance with the Open and Public Meetings Act. So that's going to be on the public meeting notice website. You're going to have to have it up 24 hours in advance. Hopefully you're going to have uh, it ready well in advance of that 24 hours because you're going to get this packet out to your board members so that they have enough time to review it before your meeting. Things listed on your agenda must have reasonable specificity and that's what it is uh, written in the Open and Public Meetings Act. The way that I've heard that uh, shared or that I like is that if it were a trailer for a movie and you walked in, you wouldn't be surprised what movie you were going to see once you got there. Um, you don't want to be surprised by anything in the meeting because anything you're talking about should already be on the agenda. Uh, all items listed uh, that the board might possibly take action on. So if an item isn't on your agenda, you could talk about it, but you can't take any action on it. Uh, and then on your agenda, you probably want your clo a closed session item to be listed permanently on your agenda. You're not always going to use that, but typically closed session type items come up without warning. And so you want to have that on there if that happens. But most of the time, you're just going to say there's no closed session needed. And so you move on to the next topic. Uh, your finance report is going to list expenditures and you're going to want to make sure that that is on track with your approved budget. That's going to be uh, a board member responsibility. Your finance committee or your business manager is going to have already reviewed your budget and your expenditures in detail. And so they're going to be able to field any questions that might come from board members who are perhaps not as uh, acquainted with the details, but they will be able to, uh, to answer those questions if they come up. You are legally required for all board members to review financial uh, statements, not, not the bank statements, but to review a financial report on a monthly basis. And so if you have this as part of your board meeting, then you have a nice um, way to track that that has been done because it'll be on the public meeting notice website, it'll have your audio uh, and minutes posted with there, and then if anybody asks any question, you will have proof that that, that has taken place. Uh, both the, a copy of the a sample finance report and a sample agenda can be found on our resource library. Um, your director's report, it, it can be what your director wants to make it. But some ideas uh, to include would be an, uh, an assessment update, either that you're about to take some kind of, of assessment or what your results are. Those tend to be on differing uh, schedules throughout the year. And so a regular report on what's happening is very helpful. Uh, your enrollment, especially now that it relates to ADM, your board members are going to want to know uh, the status of your enrollment and then also your wait lists so that they know how that's going to impact their finances and what kind of steps need to be taken uh, to address those issues. You're going to want to talk about any required uh, reports and if they're in process, if they're going to be on time, uh, that kind of thing, so that your board is aware that your director is taking care of those needed things. Staffing updates are a great thing to convey in a board meeting. The board doesn't need to be uh, involved in the details of, you know, comings and goings of staff, but they should be aware of what's going on uh, and the director's report is another good place to put that. 
you want to also talk about any upcoming or past events. It's kind of a fun thing to talk about what's going on at the school and a little more entertaining to listen to than uh, some of the other items. And then any accomplishments. This is a chance to kind of toot your own horn. Uh, what did, did the school get any awards? Did the school do really well on a particular test? Did a teacher do something great? Again, a little more uh, personal take on things. The next item is your committee reports. Uh, you should have board committees, and they will be determined by your board and or by your charter, but then they're going to tackle uh, some items in more detail. And so they are going to come back and give a brief synopsis of their recent meetings. Um, maybe that it's the assessment committee, and so they looked at your SAGE scores and dissected them and figured out where your school had a weakness. And so they're telling you that, you know, your English curriculum maybe needs to be improved in the future or you need to reevaluate something or fill a hole. That kind of information is really helpful for them to bring back and share with the board so that the whole board doesn't need to spend the time going in depth into those issues, but that they know that someone is looking at it and they can bring their findings back to the board. They they can do research. Let's say you're getting that new curriculum program uh, because of your stage results and they will bring the top three uh, samples of curriculum for the board to choose or something like that. But they can do the legwork so that you don't have to be doing that in a board meeting. And then they may bring uh, suggested policy revisions back to the board. You know, we found out that this policy wasn't meeting this need and so we need to approve a new one. Um, it is very helpful to have this happen uh, in writing so that you don't get a, a committee member just kind of standing up and trying to cover for the fact that they didn't hold a meeting or uh, pontificate and use it as their soapbox, but so that you can actually understand content and what has happened in those meetings. You can have a PTO report. This one's a little more optional, but I think it's helpful. PTO typically is very involved with your parents and very involved with a lot of events in the school and to make the board members aware of what's going on, particularly if they're not parents. So maybe they don't get all the newsletters or all the emails or flyers coming home with their students. This way they know what's going on. Uh, it's also very helpful so that if they're doing uh, fundraisers or different events, the board can hear about those in advance and maybe make some suggestions. Maybe a PTO member is not aware that if someone makes a donation, that we need to record it in a certain way to make sure that they get a uh, you know, 501c3 uh, deduction on their taxes. Or maybe you want to make sure that if they're, they have this great idea to put a bouncy house up in your uh, playground that someone on the board you know goes hey have we made sure that this is going to be covered by our insurer things like that so that you can coordinate their activities but make sure that we're meeting the requirements that we have as a school to protect us um, you're going to be talking about action items and voting and so you need any documentation on that if you're going to make a policy change, people should be able to review that policy in advance, not just get it handed to them at a board meeting. And it should have a, a red line change. So if it's not a brand new policy, it should have your existing policy, and then it should show the changes, what you're taking out and what you're adding in so that people can understand exactly what is differing from what you had in the past. If you have contracts, people need some time to be able to read those to make informed uh, choices when they're voting. And then any required reports uh, that cover that need approval of the board, so like your yucca or um, your audit management letter, those kind of things. Um, and, and there can be a lot of other things that you're going to include for your action items, but just provide the board with documentation so that they can review it in advance and they don't get handed something at a board meeting and don't have time to give it some uh, good thought. And then lastly is any training materials. Every board should be doing training on a regular basis. Um, maybe it's this, this video, maybe it's uh, reading your charter, it could be a lot of different things, but include whatever documentation that they need uh, to go through that um, so that they can be prepared and make a good use of your time. So that's all we have for you today. Uh, most of our resources can be found on our resource library at utahcharters.org, and you can also uh, contact any of us there at that website to give you additional help. Thank you.